guys, I finally got around to building my dream comm closet in this project. I'm going to be talking about how I rebuilt a stuff field closet into an epic comm closet. My old setup was functional, but it just seemed to lack that classic geek bling. I stuffed all the usual starter comm gear in a shelf on a wall. It was a good start, but I just knew I could do better, so I hatched the plan. First, demolition, my favorite part of course. Time to ditch the designer 45 degree wall, reinforce studs for the new wall mount rack, and finish up with standard touches like paint, a new rack, and all new hardware choices that come with that kind of upgrade. The tour starts out with a glimpse of the closet just after I ripped out the 45 degree wall section. You can see my structured cabling coming down to the comm panel from inside the wall. I later added a 2 inch PVC punch through to the attic for additional runs. Making her first appearance on iTech Storm is Cat5, our fluffy little mascot. I think she likes the rack I'm going to install. Oh wait. Nope. She hates it. She's a bit of a snoot sometimes. Back to the install, you can see a close up of the structured media panel I installed when my house was built. I have 8 drops of bulk cable runs entering the panel. What I need to do currently is replace the chipped out stud to the left of the panel and add another so I can support the wall rack and mount directly to the studs. You will need to support a lot of weight, so that means 4 lag bolts directly into the studs. Here you can see the result of the stud changes and the addition of the extended power receptacle position directly behind the wall rack. This will reduce the amount of cable on the external wall and give a cleaner look. Next, I need to separate the Cat5 cable from the RG6 for each bundle. The consolidated media cable bundle made running everything ridiculously easy. The goal is to run the network cable directly into the rear of the wall rack, just like the power. Additionally, I didn't have much space in the media panel with all that cable terminating in a single box. I was careful to maintain a separation of power and low voltage data cable to reduce the possibility of electromagnetic interference. If you have to navigate around power cables, always run at 90 degree angles across the cable, never in parallel. Okay, now I got my first piece of wall board up and things are starting to come together. I break out the joint compound and drywall tape. Yes, those terms are very misleading. After that, orange peel texture in a can and popcorn in a can for the ceiling. It helps to cover up the items you don't want to splatter texture all over and splatter is the name of the game with this stuff. When your texture is dry, it's time for a fresh coat of paint on the wall. I went with white. Wow, it feels so spacious in here. Alright, next level time. For uber flexibility, use a cable managed patch panel for quick network reconfigurations, easy labeling, and of course bragging rights. Go big or go home, people. You can see I took the time to label my network cables on the back side of the patch panel too. This saves time and always helps with troubleshooting. I seriously suggest getting a cable toner if you don't already have one. It's a magic wand when it comes to tracing structured cabling. Seriously, get one. Finally, all finished up with my home comp closet project. This officially ups my status as a true geek. Starting at the bottom working our way up, I have an APC horizontal metered PDU for power distribution and monitoring. Next up is the Baytech DS3 IPS remote console access server, so I can remotely configure everything via serial connection. Now I can spend my extra time making trips to the fridge getting a beer. That's multitasking. Third up is the Cisco 3550 24-port layer 3 switch I use for configuration testing. Fourth, a Netgear GS748T 48-port 1GB managed switch. Above that, I have a 1U horizontal cable manager that keeps the patch cables nice and tidy. Moving to the 6th position, I have the 24-port 1GB patch panel that leads to all the structured Cat5 drops around the house. Directly above the patch panel, there is a 2U shelf for non-rack mountable gear. I'm using it for a 40 gate 60 Bravo and a Motorola cable modem. In addition to that, I made use of the space on top of the rack for Netgear GS116 unmanaged switch and the classic W54G Wi-Fi. And finally, the one piece of hardware that makes this all possible is the StarTech AU open frame wall mount equipment rack with adjustable depth. Truly a fantastic piece of gear to keep your home enterprise network tucked away safely while allowing access from every angle. Be sure to check out my video description for any relevant links. One final note about cable management, try to support the weight of the cables with zip ties or cable velcro, and always be cautious about the bend radius of your cables as you route them to their point of termination. Be warned, you can cause loss of bandwidth or signal by overbending your copper cables beyond factory specification. It never hurts to protect your investment. Well that concludes my dream comm closet build project. I hope you enjoyed what I did with it and you find this video useful. If so, please click the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel, iTechStorm. I'd love to hear what others have done with their setup via comments or video responses. Don't forget to keep rocking your inner geek and share this video with others who are looking for ideas.